What's that, Earthy? Emphasize more the local color. Paint a visual rather than a word, word, yakety, yakety kind of story. Stop being a book ish performance artist. Okay. Where were we? Gosvin, Mega Oasis, Desert Fringe, Nomad Tents. Gosvin, <laughs> I'd like to tell you about this right now. Fabulous oasis in ancient Persia with elegant minarets. I mean, they're slender and they go up. <laughs> Some minarets. Uh. Look. Um, shimmering with millions of psychedelic turquoise tiles, like micro tiles, like micro doses of medieval sparkle, eloquent steaming, a mom's huh? bathhouses, you know, gay guys in San Francisco, it just eat your heart out. Huh? They had the hamams, huh? Uh, God's Vin, famous throughout history right up to today for their, you guessed it, hand-loomed Persian carpets. Mm -hmm. And they put a flaw in them on purpose just so they're not too perfect and hyper-organized and, you know, put in a secret flaw. I mean, I've used that method of operation since birth. I have so many secret flaws, you know what I mean? I, that I have to just commit one crime at a time. <clears throat> That's, you know, <clears throat> to get away with all this stuff all day. Yeah, what else were they famous for? The Gazvinites. <laughs> In 1067, a Thick earlobes? Hmm. Um, seedless grapes. They're called sultanas. <laughs> After Sultan's girlfriends, Sultana, Sultan and his Sultana, and she's better than a bunch of seedless grapes. Just get in there and get your mouth all juicy, yeah? Have to spit out any seeds on that. And <clears throat> for two brilliant university students at the Shiite Academy of God's Fin. We're talking Omar Khayyam. Hello, Omar Khayyam. Turn down an empty glass, you know? Rubia. Persian poetry that has lasted like right up to your poetry class today. And Hashishan Ib Sabah. Who the hell is that? Hashishan Ib Sabah. The hashish part I get. Yeah, I mean, very familiar with hashish. Hashishan. In fact, this is where we get the word for hashish from this guy's name. Hmm. Hmm. Hashish John. Yeah, he studied medieval fortifications. Forty years. <clears throat> and um, yeah, um, world theologies. Hashish John. He's got a spiritual streak. And he just twisted that into a <laughs> fantasy. Of, you'll hear about it right away, actually. Oasis of Gosvin. In the center of Gosvin, they have a little camel walking track, circular. It's like the roundabout in Gosvin for camels and their camel masters. And all around, all 360 degrees around this most 
a significant roundabout, there are kebab stands. You know. <laughs> and they're luscious kebabs. <laughs> um, you know, eat a bunch of kebabs, saddle up the beast, and galumph, 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 galumph to Babylon. Hang out with the hanging gardens of Babylon, and you can check off your bucket list six, six wonder of the world roads <laughs> first. Colossus of Rhodes. Damascus, yeah. Mm hmm. Cairo? Yeah. Just ride a giraffe around the pyramids, and you're going to be a rock star in 11th century Cairo. Constantinople? <laughs> I wish they had named that city after that Roman Emperor Constantine. Because it puts so many syllables into the... Just to say Istanbul and get it over with. Easier on the jaws. Militus. And for a final emphasis. Ephesus. I'm just trying to say. From the kebab stands of Gazvin, These camel uh, hair caravan caravan sari comedians just, just fanned out. Not only that, they went southwest, too. Yeah. They forked out to Coom and Magnificent Persephone's with its own sprawling university with fountains. Try to get your nose on this. A frankincense scented spring water fountaining up, aerating the <laughs> intoxicating atmosphere with radiant peacocks, fanning their iridescent feathers <laughs> in Cyprus gardens. Mm -hmm. Silhouetting date palms, wafting into the sunset in Persephone, the mellow, moody, mysterious time of evening. Dusk. Uh-oh. Just when everything was all Persian roadkill. Yeah, I mean, well, good for the big cities along the Silk Road. Yeah, sure. The, the, you know, with all the kebab stands, the camels coming in and out, lots of cash flow, lots of frankincense being thrown around for the fun of it. Uh, you get a bucket of saffron. Uh, over your head if you win a, a Persian track race. Hundreds of cutthroat militias. You just get past the fringe of the carpet. <laughs> Ma Mas Durrani carpet. Oh, God, yeah. Fringe characters. Cutthroat desert tribes. Marauding Islamic militias. That doesn't sound fun. With an attitude problem? I'm talking every direction. As soon as you get out of Gazvian, like one hour by galumph, galumph, you're on your beast. Bloody anarchy. More atmosphere, less bloody anarchy. <clears throat> when the storms blow off the glaciers of the 5,000 meter summit of Duk i Suleiman, the throne of Solomon Mountain, if you don't speak Farsi, I'll just clue you in a little bit. 
icy wind howls down from the slopes of Tuki Zulaman <laughs> on the southern side of the Elbers Mountains from the province of Mazandaran whipped up the treacherous mountain wind passes. It's got funneling through the Shalambar Pass. You live in Karamabad, you're trying to smuggle some pirate rice up the Caspian Sea, the back way. You got to get up to Shalimar, and the wind just whips through that pass. Good thing they have hookah hot rest area up there. Yeah, those winds. Huh? Unwelcome vapors of malignancy. Look, don't breathe in a bunch of that stuff. Okay. Born from the capricious, one time she was calm, one time she's all wavy. You know, get a beautician and settle on a plan. Capricious, Caspian Sea. Yeah. Well, those hard scramble peasants living on, in the rug fringe, they shiver under crude. Goat hair, blankets, in damp mud hut. Below the mountains, and they get a bone chilling cold <laughs> in the night that penetrates straight to the marrow. Oh. Now, this I'll translate. From the uh, Farsi language of the Persian people, Farsi. Um, they call this the season yeah. of influenza. So, um, in this Caspian sickness, it makes these dispossessed and marauders trying to get through the day and making a living by robbing enough people you know like a traffic cop and a speed trap here come for galump galump headed for militus <laughs> i don't think they're going to get there kind of and they've got those reiner horn handled daggers tucked in their silk stashes ready to so what to do you're stuck in 11th century Persia to stay ahead of the roving packs of hardcore desert jackals. Well, this is what the 11th century Persians had to do. They had to find a precipitous and right away, too, monster rock to build a fortress on top of it. And once they found one, they had to drill down the freak monolith to make sure they had access to an abundant supply of drinking water. Mm -hmm. Independent supply bubbling up from within the top of a rock and back up those water wells if they you know, had them. Uh, with runoff from watersheds trickling down from higher mountains above and channeled into massive reservoirs with magnificent plum intertwined tiles lining the inside, not just the outside, of the stone cisterns. Once you get free on the top of the rock, you go all artsy on everybody. Tiles here, tiles there. Yeah, well, look. Okay, you got your water trip together? Congratulations. Uh, you got to cordon off the top with those uh, battlemented walls. Um, and even higher stone observation towers. Yeah. Jetting out from every exposed... Uh, face, rock face, and not separated by more than one arrow shot apart. 
11th century, bow and arrow, daggers. <clears throat> well, then you get all that together, you can just confidently like walk up to the edge of your battlemented <laughs> rocks. What does battlemented mean? It's like the little crusader knight set I got as a kid when I was six. And they have those little towers in the corner called rooks. Like in a chess set. Rooks. You got to make the top of your rock like a rook tower. Uh-huh. Yeah. Crusader Knight. I had one. I still have it. It's in my love shack, you know. I play with it. Between the long stretches, between dates. Look out there, you turn 70, you turn invisible. Um, yeah. Then, you call your desert enemies. Like, they're at the bottom of the rock, but they can't get up. They're scrambling, they're shooting arrows at it, they're ramming it, they're chipping away, but nothing's working for them. You just say, look, warlord, your mother... <laughs> sleeps with camels and you dare them to knock you off your rock to play the original and this is where we got it from the old man of the mountain the original old man of the mountain what happens now you get your rock thing figured out. 